Hello, welcome back to the Applying Sand 5 series. So today we are going to solve a question called product of array except cell. Okay, so the question says, given an integer array nouns, return an answer array such that answer of i is equal to the product of all elements of nums except nums of i. Okay, so the question says that you have an array, let's say the array is one, two, three, and four. Now you have to return an answer array such that for every index, right? Here, you have to store the product of all the elements except this one, okay? So at the zeroth index, you have to store product of all the elements except this one. So it will be 24. At first index, you have to store product of all the elements except this two, that will be 12. Here, you have to store product of all the elements except what? This three, so it will be eight. And here you have to store product of all elements except this four, that will be six. So this is what you have to return at the end, okay? Now there are two limitations. First limitation is you have to solve this question in just O of n time complexity. And second limitation is you cannot use divide operator, okay? You cannot use divide operator, okay? So yeah, these are the two limitations you have. and now let's see how can we solve this question. Okay, so let's say we have array one, two, three, and four. Okay, so index zero, index one, index two, and index three. So this is the array we have, all right? Okay, and now what we have to do, we have to create an array answer and then we have to return it, okay? So we have to create an answer array. So let's first create an answer array. So let's say this is my answer array. For index zero, for index one, for index two, and for index three. So zero, one, two, and three. Okay. And this is a answer array. All right. So now we have to fill this answer array, and then we have to return it. So to so in order to solve this question, we will use a thing which we used in the last video. We are going to use a similar knowledge here. Okay. And that thing is prefix and suffix, sorry for my writing, prefix and suffix, product array. So in the last video, we used prefix and array. Here we are going to use prefix product array and suffix product array, okay? So why do we need prefix and suffix product array? Let's see, let's see. So we need to fill this answer array, right? Okay, so here I have to store the product of all elements, the product of all elements, except this one, correct? Okay, so I can say here, I have to store the product of this range, correct? Okay, here, I have to store the product of this one with this three and four, right? I have to exclude this two, correct? So I'm saying that at, at index one, I have to store the product of this range and this range. Similarly, here I have to store the product of this range and this range and at end here, I have to store the product of this range, right? So what we do in prefix sum array, in prefix sum array, we store the sum of a range, correct? In prefix sum array, we store the sum of some range. Let's say we created a prefix sum array here. So let's say here we have stored A, B, C, and D. So this A is a sum of all the elements in this range, right? This B is sum of all the elements in this range. This C is sum of all the elements in this range. And this D is, uh, is the sum of all the elements in this range, right? So that is the knowledge we are which we are going to use in this question. Okay, so just give me a second. Okay, so now let's create prefix and suffix product arrays. So suffix product array is similar to prefix product array, but we just start from the end, right? So it is just similar thing. So yeah, here we have three. So for 
suffix array and suffix array we use we'll create two more arrays here this is a prefix array this is our suffix array so for index 0 1 2 and 3 okay Okay, now let me make it a little more beautiful. Although I made it a little worse, but that's fine. Okay, so here we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here also 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so this is our word. Prefix array. And this is our suffix array. Again, sorry for my writing. suffix array okay okay now let's move forward and fill with the arrays so how do we fill prefix array here i'm going to store the product in this range that is just one itself okay so here i will store one here i will store the product of this range right so that is what this two multiplied this one okay so the product will be Two. Here I have to store the product in this range, right? So that will be what this three multiplied with this two because this two stores the product in this range, correct? Okay, so here I am going to store three into two that is six. So similarly, here I will store the product of this four with this six. Okay, so four into six is what 24. Similarly, we are going to fill suffix array but from the end side here i will store the product in this range okay so it will be for itself here i will store the product in this range that will be this three multiplied with this four okay so it will be what 12 3 into 4 is equals to 12. here i'm going to store the product in this range that will be what this 12 multiplied with this two okay so it will be what 24 and similarly here we will store one into 24 that is 24 okay so now we have successfully created prefix and suffix array now let's use both the arrays in order to fill our answer okay now let's divide let's divide this answer array into three sections okay let's say this this uh, first first index is let's say it's a uh, section one okay just give me a second first let me raise this 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 and this okay now this is our section one okay this is section one so how we are going to fill section one so here i have to store this the product of this range right so i can simply say the product of this range is what suffix of one because suffix of one stores the product in this range correct so in order to fill the section one i will just say it is what nothing but suffix of one okay now let's talk about the last section number two that is the last index okay so in last index how can you fill the last index can i say this this index here we will store the product in this range correct so the product in this range is nothing but prefix of two right prefix of two let's generalize that a little bit so if this is arr dot size minus one then the value which we will store here will be prefix of arr dot size minus two because this is nothing but arr dot size that is four minus two that is two right okay let's erase this also size minus one this 
this also okay so here we have two and let me make it really beautiful okay so here we have three and this is our section two okay now let's talk about the section third so section three is this section this whole middle part okay this section now we have to create a generalized formula for this section also okay so let's create it so the middle section let's talk about any any index in the middle section let's talk about this box this index okay here i have to store the product of this range and this range right so if i will generalize it and if i will say i am currently at index i let's say this is index i i am currently at ith index okay the product of this section will be suffix sorry prefix of i minus 1 because prefix of i minus 1 will store the product of this range and the product of this range will be nothing but suffix of i plus 1 right because suffix of i plus 1 because let's say i'm currently at 1 so prefix of i minus 1 that is 1 minus 1 that is 0 prefix of i minus 1 stores the product of this range and suffix of i plus 1 that is 1 plus 1 that is 2 so the suffix of 2 stores the product of this range correct so yes we have generalized the formula for the middle section that is just give me a second let me erase this first so the formula for the middle section is what prefix of i minus 1 multiplied with suffix of i plus 1 okay so now this is how you will fill your answer array and then you have to return it okay so here what we did let me revise it again okay so first we created a prefix product array then we created a suffix product array and then we use both prefix and suffix array in order to fill our answer array okay in answer array we have divided into three parts the part one that is the zeroth index part two that is the last index and part three is the middle index okay so in order to fill the part one we can simply take the value of suffix of one in order to fill uh, in order to fill the last index we can simply take prefix of error dot size minus two we have generalized it a little bit okay and in order to fill the middle section we have generalized a formula that is prefix of i minus one into suffix of i plus one okay so as you can see the time complexity of this code will be o of n because we are doing nothing but we are iterating over this array and then we are just filling the values with a simple formula okay but the space complexity will also be o of n because we are creating two arrays here the prefix array suffix array and the sorry three arrays our answer array also and the size of all the arrays is what n so you can say it is something like n plus n plus n that is 3n which is like overall it is just o of n okay so the space complexity is o of n the time complexity is also o of n so now let's see how can we code this okay so just a second okay let's start first we will create a vector that will be your answer okay so answer similar size let me create a variable n here that will store the size of a nums array okay so the size of answer will be n let's create a prefix array prefix size will be one and let's create a suffix array and here also the size will be n okay now let's fill prefix and suffix array let's start with prefix okay filling prefix of course these two are prefix product array and suffix product array okay so how do we fill the prefix array it is it is very similar we just have to replace the, uh, the summation with the product okay so first prefix of zero will be what nums of zero okay now let's start with first index first while i is less than n 
I plus plus. Okay. Now, prefix of I is what? Nums of I multiplied with the previous prefix value that is I minus one. Okay. This is how we fill the prefix array. Let's talk about the suffix array. Filling suffix array. Okay. So suffix array is similar. The only difference is we start from the end. Okay. Suffix of n minus one is what? Nums of n minus one. Now let's start with n minus two. While i is greater than or equal to zero, i i minus minus. Okay, and here we'll have suffix of i is what uh, the nums of i multiplied with suffix of i plus one. In prefix we have i minus one, and in suffix we have i plus one. Okay, now we have both the things prefix array and suffix array. Now let's fill the answer error. So again, three parts. We have divided into three parts. The part one is what? The answer of zero, that is the part one. It will be simply what? Let's check it again. Suffix of one. Okay. So suffix of one. Suffix of one. Next, the part two, that is answer of n minus one. That will be what? The part two is what? Prefix of answer dot size minus two that is n minus two so prefix of n minus two so n minus two and now the middle section okay that will be prefix of i minus one multiplied with suffix of i plus one okay so for and i is equals to one while i is less than n minus one i plus plus here the answer of i will be what prefix of i minus one multiplied with suffix of i plus one. And at the end, we can just return answer. Okay, we can just return the answer. Let's run it. Okay, let's get accepted. Let's submit it. Okay, perfect. So now, as you can see, we have successfully submitted our question. Now there is one thing I want to give you in a homework that is now we are solving this question in what? O of n time complexity. That is, I, I, I would say very optimized O of n time complexity, but we are solving it using three arrays. Of course, we have to create this answer array, right? Because we have to return it. But do we really need this prefix and suffix array? Okay, that's the homework for you. Try to do it without this prefix and suffix array. It's very easy. It's very easy. Just try it by yourself and hopefully we'll do it. Okay, it's very easy. So yeah, that's it for this video. And thanks for watching and keep putting to the next video. Guys.